Hello friends, in this session uh, we are going to see one of the very important topics in ARM as well as any embedded system architecture if you take AMBA, AMBA. We call it Advanced Microcontroller Bus Architecture. I am not going to go deeper into it but I am going to give you an overview which would be sufficient for you to survive in the exams as well as in the interviews. So that's my uh, core target for this session. Let's go into it right away without wasting much of the time. What is AMBA? AMBA is Advanced Microcontroller Bus Architecture. It is a yes, it is essentially an architecture which is meant for bus. You know what is a bus? It is meant for taking data or control signals. That's it. Now, where do we use this architecture? We use this in the microcontroller boards. Essentially, AMBA is meant for the microcontroller or microprocessor boards or mix of both. Now, it is an open standard on chip interconnected specification, interconnect specification for connection and management of functional blocks on the chip, which means there is a chip in that there are multiple functional blocks and how do we connect it and how do we manage those connected interfaces is what all about. AMBA helps in getting the design right in first attempt with right design. That's very important. It is very helpful for you to get the design right. And more number of peripherals can be used without having any trouble in terms of expanding or scaling up with this AMBA architecture. To enable the right uh, design in the first time development, AMBA is very much useful as I told you earlier. Particularly for the boards where, are, where there are more number of microcontrollers or DSPs or multiple processors, it becomes really, really complex and there AMBA is useful. AMBA is a bus architecture. Just remember that it is the way the bus can be used for communication between multiple building blocks inside a system on chip. Very simple. Now, AMBA is useful where we need uh, the technology enablement which will uh, further uh, enable us to have independent components to be built. The primary motivation of AMBA protocols is to have a standard and efficient way to interconnect the functional blocks and the peripherals and also reusability is most important component when it comes to design. Also, to ensure that the design is all modular and scope for the peripheral library development is also highly increased. So overall, if I have to say it in one line, AMBA is an architecture that will help you accommodate multiple processors or controllers, different types of processors like uh, DMA, which is direct memory access, or DSP, which is uh, digital signal processors, and also to enable you to have a modular as well as, most importantly, uh, the library uh, development for peripherals also uh, is supported in this AMBA architecture to make it very precise. So what could be on the board essentially when you talk about a system on chip what are all the con what are all the things that can be there on the board that is what we need to understand first it can be one or more microcontrollers it can be one or more microprocessors there could be memory elements a DSPs a DMAs USB PCI I square C and multiple peripherals now where do we have this AMBA coming into picture this AMBA is going to help you in interconnecting all these without any much problem that is the point now we need AMBA to have all these interfaced perfectly. That's exactly what I try to convey. There are multiple standards available for AMBA. AHP, Advanced High Performance Bus. ASB, Advanced System Bus. APB, Advanced Peripheral Bus. ATB, Advanced Trace Bus. And AXI, AMBA Extensible Interface. All these are the standards that are available. We may not go deeper into all of this, but I will try to cover all these at least in a crispy manner. Now, we need to understand the core before we uh, go deeper further. Now, this is the diagram that I wish you uh, refer immediately to understand things better. This is the architecture which we have taken from AMBA 2.0 spec. This is how the AMBA architecture is all conveyed. Now, this is the traditional design where we can have AHB, which is nothing but Advanced High Performance Bus or ASB, Advanced System Bus for high speed bandwidth interconnect which means high performance ARM processor, high performance on-chip RAM, DMA, high bandwidth external memory, all these are highly demanding. The requirement is highly demanding. So in this case, we are supposed to go with AHP or ASP. Both are almost of the same quality. So we need not break our head much about it. AHP is nothing but advanced high performance. ASP is nothing but advanced system bus. These two are used for 
high bandwidth interconnect and APB is used for low bandwidth peripheral interconnects. Now these all demands high bandwidth and these all demands low bandwidth because they are simple peripherals. Please understand APB is for low bandwidth, ASB and AHB is for uh, ASB and AHB is for high bandwidth. That is it. Just remember these points. And now AHB or ASB is nothing but this bus will provide high bandwidth interface between the elements that are involved in majority of transfers which means that these two are going to help you out either of these two are going to help out in all these because they are going to take care of the most of the loads that's exactly the point that you need to understand and now come to this side where we have a bridge available and then it goes to APB where the system peripherals can be connected that is it this is the architecture that you need to remember recollect and to present it during the interview or in exam now the number of functional blocks are ever increasing and AMB architecture also had to evolve. So it further grew. AMBA 3 is there which has got AXI supported which is nothing but advanced extensible interface. Now further it has been developed as AXI 4. We will talk about it a little later for now we can put it on hold. Now we need to understand the parameters one by one, the components one by one. First one APB. What is APB? You can see that here this is APB which is nothing but advanced peripheral bus. The term itself is making it very clear. It is meant for connecting the peripherals. The peripherals like UART, keyboard, PIO, timer, all these are low bandwidth peripherals. So it is a simple protocol, no complications, no pipeline support is required, used for read write from the bridge to the peripherals. This bridge is the one which is going to control and connect all this stuff and we can use ABP in between to get the read or write control into this. Please remember bridge is the master, peripherals are the slaves and we will share the same signals for read and write and burst transfer is not at all supported. That's a very important point you need to understand. We cannot have burst transfer enabled. Next is AHP. What is AHP? You can see AHP or ASB here which means that it is advanced high performance bus. I told you earlier it is meant for connecting to high performance components in the board where the bandwidth requirement is literally higher. It can be DMA, it can be DSP like that where most of the operations are going to happen and it requires very high bandwidth. Like APB, this is also a master slave concept. Multi masters and multiple slaves are supported here and burst data transfer mode is supported. That's the major difference between APB and AHP. Remember, this is in the left hand side of the architecture. AB, APB is in the right hand side of the architecture. That is meant for peripherals. This is meant for onboard components which are in demand for doing the high performance operations. And wherever higher bandwidth is required, higher processing is required, we will use this AHP. Very simple. Now, AHP Lite. What is AHP Lite? It is the next version, advanced version of AHP. This supports single master setup and there are no complexities and when there is only single master, there is no need for arbitration there. What is arbitration? Very simple. When there are multiple, ma bus, multiple masters there, the bus control has to be frequently changed from one master to another and that has to be done carefully and meticulously. We call it bus arbitration and now since it is only one master bus we do not have the care about we do not have to worry much about the bus arbitration etc and now axi what is axi axi is nothing but extensible interface advanced extensible interface whenever there is a high bandwidth requirement but with a very low latency we need to go for axi and this is an update of AHP, supports bus mode transfers, supports pipeline transfers, supports separate read and write path which is an ultimate feature of this and supporting different bus widths is also possible here. And finally AXI Lite. What is AXI Lite? It is a simplified version of AXI and no support for bus data transfers is available here. That is it. This is sufficient for you guys to really face interviews and other stuff. I hope I clarified it in this short session about AMBA clearly. You are supposed to clearly draw and remember this particular diagram for you to survey with this question. Without which I don't think you can explain things clearly. Thank you very much for following my channel and content. If you have any specific queries, suggestions, inputs, please go ahead and type it up in the uh, comment section. I'll be more than happy to clarify. And if you have any suggestions, please type it. If you like the channel, subscribe. Thank you.